Hi there. It's Sunday night in the UK at 7 p.m. and it's time for another question and answer session. Uh, you'll probably notice the lack of a certain Mr. Richard Smith and that's because Richard is a little bit tied up. As you may or may not know, he's been moving his shop and he's also been opening a fulfillment centre and he's been a little bit let down by some of his suppliers. For instance, I'm sure he won't mind me saying this, this is where you lose a lot of time. He thought his internet would be finished by four o'clock, a fitting in the week, and they hadn't got away until eight o'clock. And so when you find that you're losing bits of time here, there and everywhere, it gets a little bit difficult to um, do things like this. So don't think Richard's going to join us. I will be ever hopeful. I never know that he might turn up, but I do know he's absolutely pulled out with so much, so much he has to do. So yes, questions are fine. And I thought I'd just start with the presentation because normally Richard has tons to say, and we also have quite a few of his viewers pop in with some questions. So I thought I would just start off. First, I just want to uh, thank Bill for becoming a member. That's really appreciated, sir. Very good, thank you very much. I hope you're enjoying it. I did do an exclusive video with, um, well, I did some stuff with Bart K and I did an exclusive edit just for the members there as a thank you. So yeah, that's really great of you. I do appreciate you doing that, mate. So I hope you're watching right now. Let's get rid of that. Let's do a little uh, presentation, I think. That's what we should do. Um, and we're going to look at fibre. And I think the reason I want to look at fibre is because this comes up ever such a lot. And I don't, I don't know why it comes up so much. And the plant-based people, they absolutely love talking about fibre and how important it is. And um, good afternoon to Keto Mama and good afternoon to Mike, by the way. So, yeah, yeah, a lot of people seem to be going on about fibre recently and how important it is, how critical it is. But, of course... There's too many studies now that are showing that it isn't, and quite the reverse, saying that some things can be really improved. As you can see, there's been a few studies, one released this week, um, but the highlights of the studies have been things like uh, reduced colitis symptoms, induced clinical remission of Crohn's, inhibits intestinal inflammation, basically reduced rheumatoid arthritis symptoms. Um, one of the things is, they're seeing that fiber is feeding specific microorganisms uh, in the mucosal layer that they're critical for the development of diseases, these uh, microorganisms. So just a, just a little bit of telling you basically what we're talking about here. Uh, the lumen is the middle part and the mucosal layer is around there. This is one of the diagrams taken from one of the studies. But basically what they're finding is that fiber is making the uh, microorganisms that absolutely trigger inflammation, they're able to proliferate. And that's taken from cell host and microbe. There's the study there. And it, it was just basically saying that, um, that fiber was, was developing this microorganism, this path, pathobiont, as they call it. And um, it says there, the researchers reported the appropriate localization of a specific pathobiome in the mucous layer is critical for disease development, which is disrupted by fiber exclusion. So that was the first study there. Um, so those that are saying, and the, by the way, that isn't old news. That was a two, 2023 in November. So that's really a recent study. Uh, this study there, a high fiber diet synergizes with they, they call it pre coppery by the way, and exacerbates rheumatoid arthritis. And basically what they were saying that um, they were studying it and also comparing it to um, a diet with no plant foods and plant food diets of doing all that sort of thing. And they saw that removing the fiber from the diet was improving health conditions related to autoimmune diseases. It definitely um, reduced the symptoms of autoimmune diseases like Crohn's and Crohn's and uh, rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, they actually said a high fiber diet exacerbated arthritis via microbial alterations and intestinal inflammation. So I think that's an interesting thing as well. But the reason I'm showing you the study is because many people don't like anecdotes, real people having resolutions, showing that their gut is improving, having less inflammation, less Crohn's, less gas, less wind. 
um, be, because they've removed fiber. I mean, basically, this is what a carnivore diet does. A keto diet re removes quite a lot of fiber, so does low carb. And one of the things I was going to ask you viewers out there is I'm now going to make these notes as PDFs. And I was wondering if anyone knows how I can put them up online somewhere so you could just download them anytime you wanted. I'm just flicking through so you can see that there are lots of keynotes, lots of studies. And you can you could give these to friends if you wanted to, giving you a lot of stick about, you know, you should be eating plant based stuff. Um, lots of little bullet points. Oh, the other thing is that um, the fiber based processed foods, they benefit from shareholders. They benefit shareholders. Uh, at the cost of long-term health, basically. So Yum Brands, PepsiCo, McDonald's, the blue is showing you the profit in the last uh, uh, reported year of 2022, and this is 2012. And you can see that they're all much more profitable. Nestle, Unilever, Coca-Cola, McDonald's, much more profitable since they've been really pushing the plant-based foods. So um, lots of things for you to have a read of. I'm just showing you how much information there is. Also, when you talk about short chain fatty acids, a lot of people say that you need butyrate from dietary fiber in your colon because that will then go into um, the TCA cycle, basically. But you can also get short chain fatty acids from circulating ketones from the liver or from protein via isobutyrate. And what is great about the blood side providing this is you if you save your body doing the two of the processes so beta hydroxybutyrate goes straight in here and uh, acetoacetate goes in here just before it gets into the mitochondria so the dietary fiber gives you all the disadvantages of um, gas and bloating and all of that sort of stuff and ketones of course don't give you any of those problems so if, if you want to get into that um and like i say all the all of these pdfs will have links to studies and it's just basically it starts off nice and easy to read and, and in layman's terms, and then it gets into much more detail. So if you're interested in that, um, there you go. So let's remove that from the screen and um, let's get back to some questions because I noticed there's lots and lots of things in the uh, chat. So let's have a look at who showed up. So good afternoon, Keto Mama. That's very good. We've also said... Hi to uh, Mike, saying hi, family. That's really nice of you. Matthew, hello. That's very good. Of course, we've got Once a Week Man. I love that name. Good evening, Herbert. Hello. That's great. Uh, what? This this one, Matthew. Are probiotics beneficial on a carnivore diet if we aren't eating plant fibre? Well, I didn't know that question was going to come up. Um, don't, you, you don't really need it. I don't think... Um, Unless maybe you've had a big course of antibiotics and you want to give yourself a bit of a boost. Um, and that's from anecdotal um, reports. So, yeah, probiotics can be good for some people, prebiotics. But I don't think they're actually needed. I think if you if you can eat this way, you tend to find that um, your whole system doesn't really need anything from the fiber. So that was odd that I had that study ready for you. I really liked your career collaboration with Buck K earlier in the week. Thank you very much. Uh, Herbert has answered Matthew already. Wow, we're whizzing through this. We are re missing Richard, aren't we? Uh, Matthew has... Um, Herbert has said, no, you don't need probiotics. Oh, look at this from Barney Scotland. Hey, right? it's Phil Richardson. I'm sure you could upload a PDF to Mighty Network. Still not in your fat group. Still not your fat group on there yet. Um, for Fat Club is definitely on there. Oh, still not found it. Well, it, it is there, um, and I don't know why it's not found, but I will try and sort that out, because if you can't see it, you can't sign up for it, which is very frustrating. should be in the featured. Um, so I'm all caught up there, which is which is fantastic. Yeah, the Mighty Networks is, is it's definitely there. Um, the thing is, if I show you on my screen, the problem is, because I'm a member, I know it. I know it shows up, so it might be because you're not a member. So um don't know what to do about that, Phil. I can in the in the chat send you a link and you could try it. If you're a member already of Mighty Networks on our uh, on our Mighty Networks, then there is a link for you to try. Uh, let me just get up the link if I can. 
like I say, normally what happens is I would have uh, Rich doing this for me. All right, bear with me. Just bear with me and I'll get it. Look at this. There's loads of questions coming in. All right, bear with me um, and I will do it. So, um, right. I'm not allowed to leave. <laughs> I'm not allowed to leave. StreamYard to go to keep to get the link, but I will. I will uh, work this out. So let me just do this. Right. Talk about yourself, people. Um, let's have a look at the next question. Um, binge watching is the next question. I recently, uh, this is my game. I recently started to binge watch Sam Sulek. Have you heard of him beside his dietary choices? I do like his workouts and how he communicates with his audience. Well, I will have a look at that. So um, I've not heard of him. No, I haven't. So I'm going into my keep thing. And once a week, man, how does the carnivore diet affect your microbiome? Now, I tell you what, it's, it's covered in that PDF, actually. So the microbiome, when you get into alpha diversity and all that sort of stuff, 50 to 70 percent of, of matter, that, you know, poop, basically, that they study, 50 to 70 percent is not um, identified on a database. And they call it dark matter. That's what they call it. So um, when you're looking at those sort of things, uh, I've got the link up here from the Mighty Networks. Um, sorry, fellas. Sorry, guys. Oh, here we go. I'll put this in the chat. Right. Okay. Here we go. So that's that. Um, don't like people not being able to do something. So there's the links there. Yeah. When you when you, right. Let's go back. Actually. So what is the gut microbiome? Well, it's it's the bacteria that lives in your um, small intestine, in your colon, in your body, basically. And a lot of people feel. There's a way to make it healthy and there's a way to make it dysregulated. What happens is if you feed your body, let's say you feed your body uh, just ribeyes, then what will happen is the gut microbiome, the bacteria that needs glucose or needs carbohydrates or needs other things, not amino acids, will die off because the bacteria is competing. All the bacteria there, they are trying to get nutrients. That's it. So if you want a bacteria to die off then you stop feeding it and then when you start going on carnivore and you eat let's say fatty lamb and you eat eggs and you eat ribeyes um, maybe you have some fish well the bacteria that thrives on those nutrients is going to thrive it's, it really is that simple and those that don't do anything or are not beneficial will die off and even now, if you really speak to people that are studying the gut microbiome and, and you ask them what is a healthy gut microbiome, they will answer it is the gut microbiome that a healthy person has. Because like I say, when they do alpha diversity tests, um, most of it, they don't know what it is. So it's still undiscovered country. It's still very difficult to find out exactly what the best thing is or what the best ratios are or what the best bacterias are and, and nobody seems to know to be honest except like i say if you're healthy it's probably a good one and i think this is so simple so if you're feeding yourself lots of carbohydrates and lots of glucose you might find that you get a um, intestinal small intestinal bacterial overgrowth because you're feeding the bacteria the wrong foods and then they can leak into your small intestine from your colon and uh, overtake. And that's the easiest way to reverse it, stop the carbohydrates or stop feeding the body, those sort of things that it thrives on. So, yeah, Sam Sulek. I have not seen Sam Sulek. So let's have a look at Sam Sulek. I'm going to look that up right now. I'm probably saying the name wrong. And... Um, it's good to give me some uh, material to have a look at. My internet is very slow today, so I do apologise for that. hope that answer was all right, actually, uh, to the once a week man. Sam Sulik, YouTube. Ego lifting, fitness bro, accused of being... Let's have a look. What's this? Uh, accused of being fake natty explained well i don't know what that means well i do 
but I don't know the story behind it. Uh, is he natural? Let's have a look. I'm trying to find. It's all YouTube stuff and TikTok. So there's not like a website to go to. Well, I'll have a look. I will have a look. Um, so who asked that question? Uh, that was way back, wasn't it? Anyway, yeah, I'll have a look. Because if people suggest something, I'll definitely look at it. Uh, right, so that's my links. Um, Matthew, are you Richard, Jonathan, Rachel, Brown, Phil and Ben? Doing another Team GB live stream this Tuesday. Really love the first two weeks. Keep up all of your great work. Yeah, the, the kind of Team GB, people haven't seen, do a live stream 7 p.m. On, uh, on a Tuesday night. And it is those people there. Yeah, Dr. Rachel Brown, Jonathan, who is kind of all muscle. Uh, Richard Smith, of course, who should be here, but he's got a note, so that's okay. Um, ben Hunt, Phil Scott. I'm hoping to get Carnival Fitness Rachel on at some point. I don't know if we can get the Kitchen Detox girl on as well. So we're trying to get more people on, more influencers from all over the UK. But yes, I poss possibly will be doing Tuesday night. So I'm doing the live stream tonight here and then eight o'clock on the other platform. And then we do one within the Mighty Networks at 5 p.m. So you can join the Mighty Networks. You can do. You can become a free member. You don't have to join the Fat Club. You can become a free member and you can attend the live question and answers on a Tuesday at 5 p.m. It should be me and it should be Richard tomorrow as well. Hopefully the time will be um, good to him. So, yeah, and Team GB, uh, I think that was a thing. Um, it's all Jonathan's brainchild. I, I preferred the name Team GB, so that, that's my only bit. I, I, I suggested that. So, yeah, Mike, earlier today, I walked from the grocery store with about six kilograms of water in each hand, doing shrugs on the way home. So many clever ways to work out certain muscle groups without the gym. Absolutely. Yeah, in, this week we had two tonne of wood chop um, arrive uh, in tonne bags. And so I had to put two tonne of wood away. Which, um, which was quite tiring, but I didn't realise at the time. So I'd been up at, I got up about half past five, was in the gym at half past six, um, been doing some video editing and some research, like I say, the fibre thing there, which um, I showed you a little bit of. Um, then, the, then the wood arrived, uh, I, then I did a coaching session, and I didn't realise how much I'd done. And then by about half past nine in the evening, I was tired. I <laughs> didn't know why I was tired. Anyway, uh, I'm glad I gave Once a Week Man a good answer. So um, uh, let's get rid of, sorry, let's get rid of mics there. So I'm, I'm not being very good today with my messages, putting them on the screen. But I think one of the things I was trying to get across was that you have all these wonderful things about your gut microbiome and you, you can do so much to improve it and read up about it. So, yeah, I will try and get this PDF out to everybody and uh, maybe we can share the information or keep the information, pass it on to people who are sceptical, those sort of things. And um, we're going to stop that screen share and then present another thing for you. Um, because I wanted to do this. I really did want to get this up and running all these PDFs, and this was a different study, and it's about uh, blood glucose management and the Randall cycle, those sort of things. So let's just let's just get that up there so I can follow it through. Uh, I'll put that there. Right, yeah, so um, although this has got a very old date on it, 1984, that's the first, it does get a little bit more modern as we go through it. So it's about blood glucose and incretin or incretin effects. So basically what, what happens to your body when you ingest food? So let me go through it and I'll keep an eye. Hi, Tom. Tom J is saying good evening. And we'll see if it makes any sense or if you're enjoying it or whatever. So, yeah. So this is a PDF where you can see the study. And it was just an interesting one. We're not looking at big statistics, we're looking at mechanisms. So they took seven young, healthy, normal weight males and uh, females. And the researchers, what they did is they kept them on a weight maintenance diet. 
containing at least 250 grams of carbs per day during the study period. And on study days, the subjects fasted for 12 hours and then were given one of the following. 438 grams of potatoes, so almost a pound. 438 grams of potatoes plus 37.5 grams of fat, which 45 grams uh, of butter. So basically, butter isn't 100% fat, so there you go. 121 grams of lentils, 121 grams of lentils plus fat. So uh, not all at the same time, but different things. So uh, they wanted to see what was going to happen. So the potato obviously was a rapidly absorbable carbohydrate, while the lentils were a slowly absorbable carbohydrate. And what they measured was glucose, they measured insulin, and glucose-dependent insulotropic peptide, or GIP, I say. So the, the discoveries that were made in this study, and they've been replicated, and um, there are more modern studies, will be very interesting for people that are wearing a continual glucose monitor. And uh, both the lentils and the potatoes consumed with butter provoked a much lower glucose response than the potato and lentils alone. In other words, consuming fat along with the highly and not so highly absorbable carbs diminished the glucose response. So I have tried to make this a bit more simple, but basically this is the glucose response and if you had potatoes, just potatoes, this was the elicited response. This was potatoes and fat, as you can see. And lentils up here. And the bottom one is lentils and fat. So what's the point there? Well, the point is if you're, you're looking at a continual glucose monitor and you have carbohydrates on their own. Uh, by the way, none of this is advice yet. This is just I'm um, talking about it because um, I want you to see the whole thing. If you have a continual glucose monitor, you're going to see your glucose go up more with potatoes than with potatoes and fat. I'm not saying that you should mix them. Right. So uh, let's go to the next thing, which is so, yeah, there's your potatoes, there's your potatoes and fat, there's your lentils, and but right at the bottom, lentils with fat. So that looks pretty interesting. But Let's have a look at the insulin response. And this is where people get a little bit confused because the blood glucose or continual glucose monitor is doing great work, but it's not showing you the whole story. And this is what I'm always talking about behind the scenes. How much insulin are you producing to get this response? So if you look at the insulin response, these blood sugar elevations uh, that were elevated, you see that the lentils with fat drove the insulin levels higher while the potato without fat did the same thing. In the paper, the authors say the differences are not significant. But so there we go. So this is the insulin response just to potatoes, quite high. Can you see that? Uh, and the potatoes with fat. And it's sort of similar to the blood glucose re response, isn't it, really? The potatoes were the highest, potatoes with fat were second highest on the blood glucose. So anyway, let's go into the next thing. Um, that's what the, that's the that's the original charts. But let's go into the GIP. Okay, so this is uh, this is the next thing. So the addition of fat to the carbohydrates, although it reduces the blood glucose on the continual glucose monitor, it absolutely drives GIP way up. GIP, short for glucose dependent insulin tropic peptide. So this is a hormone that's released by the case cells. It's actually in the small intestine on the brush border. That's not on the PDF, but anyway. Uh, upon its release, the GPI sort of functions to signal to the pancreas to release insulin and glucagon, which is important, in anticipation of sugar absorption into the bloodstream. So basically, the augmented release of insulin uh, is termed the incretin effect. So this is what happens. When you consume glucose and it goes into your body and it gets into the small intestine, it will signal to the pancreas basically to release insulin. So this, this is important. And I'll tell you why the incretin effect is important. Um, because it shows how important it is that your small intestine is involved. So the discovery of the incretin effect dates back to the 60s. And there was another test that they did. So they've administered some glucose 
uh, solution orally and we looked at their blood sugar rise. I said, so this is the next study. So what they did is they basically gave people some glucose, maybe like this, mm -hmm, and measured once it's in your body, what does it do to your blood glucose? And then what they did was they stopped the people taking the glucose that way and intravenously put it into their veins, directly into their veins. So you would assume, wouldn't you, it's the same blood glucose because you're you're introducing the same level of glucose. But of course, this did not do the same thing because what they found is once they looked at the insulin re reaction to the oral glucose, um, that was really substantially succeed, uh, exceeded by the intravene, uh, you know, by the, the oral one, absolutely exceeded the intravenous one. So what they were showing was it's not blood glucose that is putting the insulin up, but actually the ingestion of glucose. It's not what's in your bloodstream, it's what you're eating. So why is that important? Well, because you get some downstream effects and you're not realizing how much you are putting up your blood um, insulin because you are looking at your blood glucose. You're not looking at your insulin effect. So you could be happily eating your potatoes with some fat and looking at your continual glucose monitor and thinking, wow, this is great. My blood glucose isn't going up very much. But in the background, you are having huge amounts huge amounts of insulin and it's the insulin the huge amount of insulin is actually making your blood glucose look good well that's not a great effect so michael eads did this great graph which i've stolen from one of his presentations um so i'm giving him a credit there and i think that's actually not his i think that's taken from somebody else so if you look at the green line at the bottom of that that's the insulin response from iv glucose that's glucose going into your bloodstream and this is the insulin response, the blue one, from you ingesting it. It's a huge difference between what happens if you have it put into your bloodstream and if you eat it. And um, he also did this great thing about refined foods compared to fully structured. So uh, this was undamaged carbs against damaged carbs, which is a posh way of saying processed or unprocessed. And that makes a huge difference as well. So, again, this is a PDF that I put together. Um, there is so much more to this as well, but it's supposed to be looking at it holistically. And then what we get into is exactly my situation. When I was younger, I was metabolically healthier and easy, it was easier to cope with these issues. That was the thing. Whereas now, or when I got into my 40s, I found it very difficult to not be pre-diabetic, even though I was eating really well. So um, I think the more you are looking at continual blood glucose monitor and not thinking about your background insulin, you could be giving yourself a false sense of security. So our body tends to like protein and fats, but it certainly doesn't like carbs and fats. So if you're having a little bit of carbohydrate and you're thinking it's okay because your blood glucose monitor is looking okay, don't forget in the background your insulin could be going up. That's basically what it is and that's been tested and that's been shown time and time again. So yeah, let's go back to the messages. Uh, good evening, Tom J. That's really nice. Matthew has put something here. Common Sense Labs, Blood Labs Demystified by Dr. Ken Berry and Kim Hamilton is a brilliant book for everyone interested in learning about what the blood labs mean. It was only recently released on Amazon. And of course, uh, I'm doing a PDF about that as well, because I have got a Bloods Master document, which explains what you're testing and what a low reading means and what a high reading means. So uh, I might even do that as an ebook. But anyway, if fructose is metabolized the same way as alcohol, there should be a ban on selling it for underage customers. What a great point, Mike. Yes. <laughs> but of course it's not about people's health mate it's about profit so i doubt that's ever going to happen but that is a very good point uh and as uh one sweet man says that would mean no sweets for kids hey oh that would be great wouldn't it are we missing richard i am i've got like a he's normally here isn't he down this side uh, uh that's a point one sweet man prevent or at least slow down progression of diabetes and non 
alcoholic fatty liver disease for kids. Yes, this is it. So much fructose. It's incredible. I mean, when I was talking about the blood glucose monitor, obviously that doesn't even measure fructose or fructose response. So we don't know uh, what's going on there. Uh, I think in that PDF I just showed you there about the blood glucose, I do say it would be really nice if we could have a continual insulin monitor, but it just seems to be too expensive for the moment. Uh, Mike, I know it will never happen, but I just want to share an idea for humorous purposes. Well, it made me laugh, yes. Um, Tom, I'd love to see Kent Carnival, Ali Houston, or perhaps even Dr. Unwin on the GB Carnival's chat. Yep, I agree. Uh, we did have Dr. David Unwin. I'm assuming you're thinking David. It could be Jen, obviously, his wife, because they're both doing really well with the low carb and uh, reversing type 2 diabetes. And the PDFs can be shared from the Google Drive. Okay, so what I will, I'm guessing I'll put them on Google Drive and then I'll send a link out and you can uh, download it. So, yeah, okay. Selena, hello. Very interesting, thank you. Well, yes, I do try my best to be interesting. So, uh, yeah, that I, I've caught up. Can you believe that? You see, there's no Richard. That question, well, that remark was 7.29. There's been no questions, really, but that's okay. Um, and here we are at 7.31. I don't think Richard is watching at the moment. Um, he's absolutely shattered. So I do apologise on his behalf. I wore a shirt especially tonight to look a bit more posh. Um, I, um, one of the people on YouTube has been mentioning that I am sort of in a room with a filter and they want to see me in daylight and stuff like that. So um, I, I can't do this if he's watching, this person constantly commenting. First thing I would take it as a compliment that you want to see me in daylight because you think the filter is making me look better than I actually am. Uh, I will take some footage in daylight and maybe do a screen share or something like that. I've got my phone here, but um, I took some footage this morning, but I don't know how to share it directly. So um, I'll do that later. I was looking for Just M, who normally turns up, but she has not turned up. So I'm just going to say hello to her. And Carnival Muscle's not online either. So, yeah, I think that was the, the two biggest things that happened this week was one was that brilliant study about fiber. And now we've got fiber being implicated in rheumatoid arthritis and Crohn's disease, uh, intestinal inflammation. And um, basically, we now got mechanisms, proven mechanisms, and we've got tests where they've taken fiber out and seen improvements. So interventional experimental data. So that's that that is a good PDF for you to share if people say you should be having fiber. Um, and the one about the increasing effects and blood glucose, blood glucose management, and the fact that you're not seeing what your insulin is doing in the background. I will definitely try this Google Drive and I'll maybe put links on my website. So if you don't know the website, it's the ukcarnival.com. And there's plenty of um, plenty of things for you to look at. I do have success stories, I do have reviews. Uh, links to the app as well and I think you know links to the, to the mighty networks lots of expert opinion on there so check out the website if you can uh, Rich and I've been doing the mighty networks like I say so we've got a live tomorrow at 5 p.m and if you've got questions you can ask anything you want and you can be about training it can be about food it can be about absolutely anything Matthew's been to a couple and I think um Carl has been, but anyway, yes, you can always come on and you can ask absolutely anything you like. It lasts about 30 minutes. Um, Tom there is saying about uh, Dr. Eads puts together, yes, absolutely. It, he is brilliant. Michael Eads is about the best person there. I know he collaborates, I think, with, with um, Peter at Hyperlipid. They're very good. I also like um, Amber O'Hearn, but I have. Got sort of positive vibes from both of them that they might come on, but pinning them down is a different kettle of fish. Um, getting a response, I had a response from Ken Berry back in April, but we still, you know, where are we, November, and we still haven't had him on. So I am trying to get the guests on. Didn't know what everybody thought of Sally Norton, Sally K. Norton last week. I thought she was brilliant. I think she's very good. Her answers are um, very concise and to the point. When I was editing the video, I didn't have to take anything out for the replay because I put a replay of it onto um, the platform that rhymes with crumble. And 
you know, that was great. I thought it was really good. She was really good value. So um, any experts you think you can get on, then I'd love to see uh, the suggestions as well. We haven't got Cammy tonight. Cammy was the person that suggested trying to get um, Sally K. Norton on. And I think she actually implicated it in the end and, and, and got it through. So that, that was interesting. So that's all the questions. I think that's fabulous. Um, I was going to share something else for you. So let's get rid of my, let's get rid of that. Um, I don't want to go back to the blood glucose monitor. I think I think I covered that fair enough. So let's have a look at the next thing. So um, carnivore. Right, I'll just uh, do a screen share of the website just for you to have a look at this. And uh, I'm just trying to get you to be able to see all the information that you want and make information f freely available. So, yeah, let's share the website. So you can just have a quick click onto that. So, yeah, on the website here, you've got things at the top there, the podcast food and drink all information about that meal plans you can book the coaching sessions i'm doing a deal at the moment where you get five sessions for the price of four which is really good and then this drop down menu more success stories details about the 24-hour live stream we did reviews online personal training more rc experts and then you've got articles here so this is um, something that people don't seem to realize is available you can even get this on the mobile so uh, blood work and cardio, conflicting information, lots of different things that we talked about. Uh, I tend to put it on there. So uh, let's get into uh, where's the blood work? The blood work one there. Somebody mentioned blood work. So here's a little bit of stuff here. It's just about what's the best test to get. It's not the full details, but um, it just tells you what would be good for different things. So nice and simple. Some of the things are really simple. And if you've got time to have a look at the website and give me some feedback, that'd be really good. I'm thinking of putting more videos on there, actually, rather than just be text-based. But what happens, you go to the home page, you want to see what experts say, you just click on that. Uh, Real-life success stories, just click that. That's if you're starting out on Carnivore, there's the 19 tips for you to start. Some of the reviews when I was at Rivero, some reviews from... Um, people are coached and how much to eat when what and how much write your own shopping list that's interactive you click on that and then you can write a shopping list from a selection of things making a commitment one of the things about this way of eating is committing to it and I'm a great believer if you write something down you're going to possibly focus your mind a little bit more so you click on that make a commitment and what happens is it um, generates a commitment which you get emailed uh, obviously, the coaching there, which does fast track a lot of prog uh, progress for people. Test your knowledge, little quiz if you want, little quiz. More community stuff. I do run a little locals um, setup as well. Exercise workouts. And then we've got science and some things that people find very useful, like the fruit and veg thing, the truth about that. That's, it's actually taken from PDFs and details from the growers themselves. So it's not... Um, conspiracy theories or tinfoil hat stuff you can actually look at what they say and print as public documents and this is where i get the fact that pears can be over eight months old legally apples can be over a year old when when i say year you know uh, old from being picked to being on your your shelf and of course you've got this substance now a p w -E e l appeal which is uh, sprayed onto all fruit it can't be removed and that was uh, funded by and Mr. Bill Gates. So there you go. Think about fasting here. Oh, well, actually, I could go back. I could go back to that blood glucose thing because fasting. It shows that um, the some of the uh, studies showed some brilliant results of what happens when you fast. Things about electrolytes. There's a bit more about blood glucose and insulin. So there's loads of stuff there, and um, there's even a feedback form that you can put on. So let's let's stop that share a second and get back to your questions. So uh, there's some new comments, so let's get to those. Da, 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 da. Um, let's have a look. 
Matthew, what do you and Jane eat on Christmas Day? Do your family eat carnivore with you or eat roast potatoes and vegetables too? Now, uh, I'm really worried now that you are um, spying on me because we had this very conversation. Because tonight we be, we basically ate a whole chicken between us, Jane and I, and she was saying about potatoes and veg. Um, she's more ketivore. Um, she wasn't moaning and saying, I really need potatoes and veg, but she did mention it. And I said, well, you know, you can tolerate it. I don't want it. I don't want potatoes. I don't want veg. I know that if I have that, it's not going to make me optimal. And it does put me backwards, definitely. Uh, I think on Christmas Day, I will be carnivore. I don't think I'll partake in anything in particular. Um, but I think Jane might a little bit because her daughters and her dad and all that sort of stuff. But um Potatoes are particularly bad. As I showed you, actually, with that blood glucose testing, potatoes are really, are really bad. If I remember rightly, when I looked at the glycemic index, and this I found particularly interesting, the glycemic index, which, which isn't very good, but it's something that can give you a trend or an idea about things, they had this idea of calibrating it so that a score of 100 would be like having a spoonful of glucose. And what effect had in your blood glucose and what was what was the effect of pure glucose and 100 they thought would be the highest score and i think the potato with beans baked beans which we have in the uk was 123 i think it was terrible and um about maybe four years ago we were jane and i were um somewhere up uh, out of the way where you had to get on to sort of um, cable car to get there and there was a cafe and the choices of food was atrocious and th th they were doing baked potatoes and she said oh, I'll have a baked potato and I'll add lots of butter because that will slow things down and lots of cheese what we just said uh, this is a real true story backing up that science and within 20 minutes, she was in an absolute state, felt really awful. So what had happened there, yeah, her blood glucose had gone up, but her insulin had probably shot up to ridiculous amounts, absolutely ridiculous amounts. I mean, the biggest problem about blood glucose is not necessarily um, it going up, but it's spiking, going up inappropriately and very fast in, in quite a sort of quick way and then dropping in a very quick way because you have this... Uh, biphasic release from the pancreas of insulin to stop this toxic sugar getting into your bloodstream. And it's probably the peaks and troughs more than anything that are problematic. So I uh, hope that answered that question. Yes. So in short, Matthew, I did a Richard there. In short, she may have some roast potatoes and veg, but it's very doubtful. Um, there you go. Uh, Mike, I would like you to do a live with Dr. Baker at some point discussing his diet exercise protocol and how he still how he still has not developed diabetes <laughs> from all the red meat. Yes. Well, I have been on his show a couple of times, and he did the carnivorathon. So, yeah, I'll ask him. Yeah, I'll ask him. Because um, he's always good, and he's a big supporter, obviously, of the carnivore diet. It's difficult to get people onto my little channel. You need to make it bigger. So we need to get to at least 10,000 subscribers. So if you haven't subscribed, please do that. I think I'm at 9,200. 50 or something like that. Once it gets to 10,000, it seems to pick up sort of exponentially faster. You know, it sort of compounds up and you can get more people on once you get more subscribers because they think it's it's worth them coming on. Uh, so liking, commenting, sharing always helps. Okay, right. Is a sauna after a workout beneficial for building muscle? Um, I would doubt that very much. Uh, I think saunas are good. I think they're ever so good, actually, um, because you're going to help your body to detox and it is, it, it, it's good to sweat some stuff out. But I think if you've worked out really hard, um, personally, I don't know if elevating your, temp your body temperature and sweating more is going to be good because of your dehydr dehydration issues. But I would definitely say that's something to look into or experiment with because I used to train and do a steam room. Now I did that because my hearing's really bad and I felt that my ear, nose and throat were, and my breathing was much improved by steam. Uh, but I think because the sauna is more of a dry heat, 
I kept away from that. But that could be something to experiment with. I haven't done any studies on that. Uh, I know sauna is beneficial as part of an overall life plan, but actually I've never looked at the benefits of sauna straight after working out. So that's another one to have a look at. Do some studies and get the PDF sorted. So let's have a look at this. Tom, you should title it the first ever carnivore 24 hour live stream, just so people know. Yes, I think I might do that instead of calling it carnival carnivore of them. You know, when I edit this, there's some brilliant ideas. Um, but anyway, yes, uh, I know why you're saying that. Um, Matthew here is saying that a sauna is more comfortable than a cold shower. Now, this is this is injury prevention. Some people take cold showers and Premier League footballers do jump straight into sort of um, a cold plunge. Some of the top teams have gone in for that. And some have like special rooms that they go into, which are very, very cold. And uh, they're in there like for 30 seconds. And, the, you know, that brings down the inflammation. So um, some people are thinking that's good. This, I tell you, it's a gold mine today. Um, and I would doubt, sort of, I'm sorry I keep saying um, but there's a lot to read and there's only me. Uh, would you have the same effect eating with lots of meat? Would you have the same effect eating with lots of meat? Um, I'm assuming you're talking about the glucose studies. Uh, well, um, meat is protein and fats. So you, you're, it's very doubtful that you're going to get a glucose response. And too, too many people also are doing their insulin now. So I've seen hundreds, if not thousands of bloods. When people do their fasting insulin and their C-peptide, which is a proxy marker of how much insulin they're making on the carnivore diet, there's never a problem with overproduction of insulin. Whereas when I was doing the phlebotomy before I was known for carnivore and you know just starting out in low carb, so I had a lot of people that are still high carb, Fasting insulin, C-peptide was uh, a nightmare, which is how we know the background insulin is a problem when you're doing the phlebotomy. It's great questions, actually. Uh, fractural beans. Guys, does anyone have experience wearing the CGM while swimming? Manual says up to three minutes. I swim for two plus hours, afraid to put the CGM on and equally afraid to stop swimming. And that is the only activity I can do for up to 30 minutes. So, um, yeah, if anyone's got any experience of swimming and the continual glucose monitor, please post your comment, uh, even if it's not in the live, if it's in the comments afterwards when um, when it's replayed on YouTube or the other platform, of course. Dr. Baker posted a video on his YouTube channel of him eating 3.8 pounds of Tom Hawk steak in nine minutes. What a machine. Yes, I like that. Um, He's done that a few times because people don't believe how much he eats. I can't believe that people sit and watch it. But anyway, um, I can't believe how much meat I eat. And, and Selena, I'm getting to the second part of your question. Uh, Kyle, first live I've caught two months in, semi-strict, with a few cheat meals. Uh, feeling great. Mental health is getting better. I lost 8K. That's brilliant. With no exercise. Yep, you don't have to exercise, but it's always beneficial to add it for overall health. But... To lose weight, you do not have to exercise when you first come over to this way of eating. Comfortably fitting a uh, large shirt, 35 years old, 85 kg, six foot. Well, that's that's pretty good sounding uh, body composition. So, yeah, losing 16 pound plus with no exercise, that's not a surprise. Yes. So will you have the same effect with jacket potato and meat? Um I don't know. I, I think that would slow down your continual glucose monitor, definitely, because, you know, the meat has got some fats in there. Um, but I haven't got the science to hand. So I don't like to guess. I like to look it up and also to speak to people about that. Uh, Matthew, he should start a mukbang channel. I don't know who that is. Uh, that's Tom replying. Right. Um Kyle, love your content. Thank you very much, Kyle. That's very nice. Herbert is here. I saw a lot of people with CGM on the seaside swimming and being in water for hours. So there you go. There you go. Uh, Carl, hi, Steve. Is there a way for someone to target visceral fat over subcutaneous fat? Yes. Um, 
<laughs> basically keep away from fruit. That's the first thing, because anything that's going to make fat out of sugars in your liver um, is going to target the visceral fat. It's going to actually go into the visceral fat. So I think cut down on the fructose is one of the things. Um, I would just stick with protein, fatty meats, eggs, those sort of things, just be carnivore, fish, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I would think it's more about what you avoid. So the visceral fat can absolutely plummet, which I, I measured my visceral fat uh, and had scans of people on DEXA scans. And this way of eating, it always seems a, seems a big drop. As soon as they add things like fruit and honey, it does tend to go back up. Because that's um, carbohydrate and fructose that can't really be utilised to build stuff. And yes, you're right, Herbert, visceral fat is mostly targeted first. That's your body being very clever, isn't it? Trying to get rid of the dangerous fat around your organs. Fractal beans. Thank you, Stephen. Is it okay to post a link to a study on health effects of ketogenic diet and keto suppression on elegant French study to shut vegans up? No carb. Dave interviewed a participant today. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, put it in the chat and I'll click on it. So that's good. So uh, Tom J, mukbang is a type of video where people watch someone eating a large amount of food. Usually junk is quite popular among Asians. So, okay, the Asian community likes that. I think um, a lot of people probably like watching that. There is some guy that is very overweight from eating junk food, and it's quite a frightening, horrible video to watch as he stuffs himself with stuff that's going to make him um, die much younger. Uh, I, I personally, I don't see why that's entertaining because I just want to, you know, give him a big hug and say, you need to stop this and let's get you back to healthy and actually get more traction. You could get to a point where you say, right, whoa, I'm stopping now and I'm going to reverse all this stuff. And this is how I'm going to do it. And boy, would that person get support. I don't know his name, but I just think when he started he looked pretty normal, and I think he was just eating junk food. So, yes, this mukbang was his thing. He's got lots and lots of followers, but he's very uh, overweight now and looks incredibly ill and what he's eating. So um, Tom J, Fractal Beans, is saying bulimia by proxy. I don't really understand that. But then uh, I haven't looked at all the comments. I've tried to keep up with all the comments. Uh, yes, so we've done 52 minutes without Rich. Um, let's mention him again. The ketopro.com is his website, and you can see him there um, on the Mighty Networks tomorrow, Monday at 5 p.m., which would be really good to see you there. I'll be there. I think Matthew probably will be there. He's been a very good supporter of the live QMAs, trying to get that around. Maybe we see Phil. Um, let's have a look. Oh, we got some more questions. I've got some more messages. This will see us out. And then, of course, I will put the link into our eight o'clock on um, the, you know, the crumble part of it. Herbert, also high intensity interval training for visceral and not going, not going into prolonged activity to avoid stress on the body. Yeah, HIIT is great. I mean, I'm a big fan of sprinting, short bursts, sprint of all, as I call them. And I think that's good. Yeah, anything short, hard and intensive. Short, hard, intensive, we used to call them, I'm sorry to swear, shit workouts. Just to remember that, short, hard, intensive. Sorry to swear, I don't swear much, but um, that's that's how we remembered it. Uh, this is the study, keto women. Then they put them on a healthy diet, then back on keto, eye opener. Oh, I think, yes, I do remember that. And I think they were quite surprised at how keto was so much better than the alleged healthy diet. But yeah, put the link Put the link in the comments if you've got it, which is great. Matthew, when you did bodybuilding, did you do neck extensions such as flexion and extension? No, I didn't. I did all the main lifts, squats, split squats more than anything, um, deadlifts, chest press, chest flies, bicep curls, triceps, dips, pull-ups, chin-ups, you know, just nothing particular uh, there. I didn't do any of this stuff because that's bad for your shoulders. Um, anyway, yes, good question, Matthew. Thank you for that. Shoulder press I did, but with my elbows slightly forward. 
there was something oddly satisfying about it. This is watching the junk food. I'd rather eat some food myself instead of watching it. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Let's have a look at this. Oh, kind of all muscles there. Hello. Right. That's very kind to see you, sir. Unrefined trends. Can you explain glucose insulin response to proteins, please? My BG stays high when I eat protein and I feel awful. Should I aim for ketogenic ratios? Um, yes. Well, I don't know how long you've been doing this and how long you've been wearing your continual glucose monitor or how long you've been doing the finger pricking. Um, but uh, and how much protein you're eating and when you're doing it. So there's lots of things there. But basically, when you eat food, uh, your body will increase its blood glucose concentration. Normally, with protein, you get a response because your body is firstly going hypoglycemic and your body picks this up because it's used to carbohydrates and it releases glucagon to increase your blood, um, blood glucose in your bloodstream because it doesn't want you to go hypo, it doesn't want you to go too low, because fats and proteins, they don't elicit quite a high blood glucose response. And also they take a little while to digest, unlike carbohydrates, especially refined carbohydrates, which are quick acting and put your blood glucose up. So what happens when you eat carbohydrates, and I'm trying to make this as layman's as possible, um, the body is expecting a quick release of sugar the biphasic response or just means two responses from the pancreas are pretty quick. The first one's out. Once you start to smell, taste, think about, um, you're going to have something sweet. And then once you start eating, as I say, the body gets into the small intestine and the incretin hormones get to the pancreas and say, right, we need X amount of insulin. Oh, by the way, there's too much blood glucose. We need a lot of insulin. And then they bring it down, which is why you get the sugar high and then you get the sugar crash. When you eat protein, that's not happening. Um, so what happens is the glucagon comes out and it just makes sure that your blood glucose goes up a bit. That's that. Right. Um, don't forget, I will need to put the link into the other uh, place for you. Just let me do that. So if people want to join us at eight o'clock, they can on the other platform. Just let me get that for you. Um, and I hopefully we'll see you there. So let me put that in. That's just on the other platform. So we do an hour on YouTube and then we go over to there. Uh, let's have a look. Um, it's good to see you, Jonathan. We could have had you on as a guest, actually, because Rich got tied up. Um, fractal beans. My boyfriend hid my keto mojo sticks and I suspect will hide the CMG. CGM, sorry. I'm beginning to suspect I love data more than him. Oh, dearie me, really? Oh, dearie me. Yes. Uh, when I started running in my 40s, someone warned me that I would be obsessed with the data when I was doing mile sprints and I was doing uh, 5K, 10Ks and 10 miles and half marathons. And boy, I got absolutely obsessed. And I have so many diabetic patients who get obsessed with the data, absolutely obsessed with the data. It's easy to do, especially when it's going really well and you just can't believe how you're managing your blood glucose so well. Matthew, yeah, I'll see you tomorrow on the Mighty Networks 5 p.m. live question and answers, which is three. Don't forget to check out our Mighty Networks link was earlier in the uh, thing. Thank you, uh, Once Week Man, saying it's a great show. It feels very rushed. Carnival Muscle, thank you. Tremendous. Unrefined trends, thank you. That's fine. Uh, what we got here, Tom J. See you. Thanks for the valuable information. Everyone's going. I'm hoping some of you will come and join me. Uh, maybe next time. I hope Rich is all right. Yes, he's just absolutely shattered from moving his business from one place to another. Uh, seriously, it is important to have measurable results. Yeah, I was, I was, I agree. Uh, this morning when I was sprinting, it's important to me to see that I'm making progress. So absolutely, I have no problem with people looking at data. I think it's when it when you're not looking at your performance or your clinical presentation, that's when I get a problem with it, right? So always a pleasure, apparently, according to uh, Selena. Oh, no, Fractal Beans. Uh, yeah, Selena. Oh, right, this is great. So yes, thank you very much. That's 60 minutes. I hope you like the shirt. I normally wear my T-shirts, and I did it because I thought... Rich was going to wear his shirt today. So anyway, um, let's see you maybe on the Mighty Networks. 
if uh, if you can get there for 5 p.m. tomorrow. And if you're going to enjoy the next hour on the other platform, that would be fabulous. So I'm going to end the stream now. I wonder if Colonel Will Muscle will pop in. Anyway, okay. Have a good evening. If you're not coming over, thank you for joining us and thank you for the questions. Don't forget, 